There's a hidden feature of Google Forms that will help make sure that the data that people submit is in the format that's most useful for you. Hi, my name is John Sowash. I help teachers and students use Google products in the classroom. Throughout this video, I'm going to be using this Google Form, which is going to highlight some of the examples uh, that I want to show for you. You can check out this form by clicking on the link in the video description if you'd like to take a closer look. The feature I'd like to highlight for you is called response validation. And it's a very simple concept. You can create rules that will prevent people from submitting data that doesn't fit a prescribed format, length, or whatever criteria you establish. Let's take a look at a couple of easy examples. Now this first question here is very common in a form, email address. Having created thousands of forms and asked people to fill them out, I can attest that there are an unlimited number of ways for people to screw up entering their own email. Response validation will check to make sure that this is correctly formatted as an email address. If I just type something in, I'm going to get an error message that says, oh, that doesn't look like an email. Please try again. The text in this field must fit the format username at something.com, net, org, etc. And as long as it fits, it'll allow that uh, field to be submitted. Let's go on to another very simple example. Um, this is more one more for teachers or maybe in a survey if you're a, a business. Um, this is going to restrict the length of a submission. So in this case, I'm a teacher. I want my students to type in complete sentences. So I've set up a rule that will prevent students from submitting something that does not meet a um, minimum length. You can set a minimum length or a maximum length. Um, and they have to go back, enter um, more information if they don't meet that minimum. Let's take a look at how I actually set these up. I'm going to go ahead and open up the same form. This is the editable version of the form. Let's head down to the email address example. The first thing you're going to do is go to your question, click on the snowman in the bottom right corner of that question, and you'll see an option for response validation. That's what you have to turn on. This is not on by default. Once you have that enabled, you're going to see a selection of options appear. Um, and this allows you to set up the rule. Now, there are four different um, rules. You can do a, a numerical rule, a text-based rule, a length rule, or regular expression. We'll talk about each of them here in a minute. Now, I'm going to select text because that's what emails are. And then Google Forms actually provides a pre-configured rule specifically for email address. It's super easy. You click it and you're done. So I click email. And then it's very important that you include an error message. So if someone tries to enter something that does not satisfy your rule, you need to tell them why or how to fix it. And so you'd be like, oops, please check your email and try again, something like that. Now, for the writing prompt, uh, the length, that's also a text-based um, validation. So this time, I'm going to set it to length, and then I can set the minimum or maximum character count. Now, it's important, again, this is a character count, not a word count. So you have to kind of estimate how many characters is a sentence or a paragraph. Um, and set it accordingly, and then your error rule as well. You can also do this with the multiple choice checkbox. And this can be quite useful if you're asking people to select a series of options. Maybe you're giving them a menu and you want them to select um, three choices or no more than five or at least two. We can set those criteria as well. So here's a simple question. We have a series of checkboxes. The question is, which of the following are mammals? Now, if I check one mouse, it gives me a hint. It says, oh, there's at least two mammals on this list, and I can select them. As soon as I select the second one, the error message goes away. Now, here's a little bit different option. Um, I can select multiple options for this question, but as soon as I exceed the maximum number of selections, I get that error message. You cannot select any more than five. This is um, the ability to set a selection criteria. So here we are in the editable form. 
I turn on response validation like we just did. I'm gonna get different options because this is a multiple choice, not a free response question. And so I can select at least, at most, or exactly, enter the number, and then you make sure again that you enter your error message. Now there's another interesting way that you can use response validation as sort of a password. Now this is not a super secure thing, but it does have some advantages. So I have a question in my form that says, what is the password? And anything you enter into this space is marked as incorrect. There's only one word that will satisfy this password. Now, how would you potentially use this? This would prevent your form from being submitted unless the person has the password. I've seen teachers use this. For example, if you're having a take home quiz, uh, you don't want your students to complete or view that quiz until they've submitted their study guide. They submit their study guide, you give them the password, then they can enter it and enter and access the rest of the, uh, the quiz. Um, there might be forms that you want to list in your organization, um, but you have to have special permission or a reason to fill out that form, so you put a password in front of it. Again, it's not like a super secure thing, but it is a slight roadblock that prevents people from submitting information that um, isn't necessary. Now, the password for this form is the word Pluto. And so as soon as I enter that, it allows my form to be submitted. This works very well with branched Google Forms. You can actually password protect a portion of a form by using response validation that will prevent a particular area from being accessed without uh, knowing what the password is. Now let's look at how I set this up. It's pretty straightforward. We're back to our editable form. Um, I've gone ahead and turned on response validation selected the text option and we get a selection of choices we used email earlier but you can just simply say uh, contains or does not contain a particular word and so i just enter whatever that word is and my error message this also works very well uh, if you're a teacher you can do kind of vocabulary tests this way say write a sentence using the word pluto well if the word pluto isn't in the submission it'll say sorry you forgot the vocab word please try again uh, potentially even spelling tests could be uh, done this way. Now these are some relatively simple examples for uh, response validation in Google Forms. But sometimes you need to create a custom rule for a particularly unique piece of information that you're requesting. Maybe you have special ID numbers or phone numbers or any number of uh, things. We have a solution for that as well. It's a little bit more complex, but very, very powerful. This is regular expressions. So regular expression is a, a type of code that allows you to specify the format for a given response. Now, regular expressions can be quite complex to create. Fortunately, I've got a little shortcut for you that will uh, help you do it on your own. Now, what does a regular expression look like? Uh, that's one right there. So a very common application for regular expressions would be phone numbers. There are about 25 different ways that you can enter a phone number with spaces, without spaces, dashes, area codes, extensions, lots of different options. It's super annoying to have to go back through submissions and clean them up and put them in a consistent format. Regular expressions can help ensure that we're collecting the data in the format that we want. Okay, so this is one example. Now let's let's take a closer look. Okay, now this first example here in my form does not require any formatting. All it requires is a 10 digit number. So if I just type in my childhood uh, phone number, it will automatically accept that. Now if I, if I forget the area code, it's gonna say, oh, I need the number with the area code, but it doesn't look for spaces, dashes, periods, or anything like that. Now, if you wanna be more specific, maybe you want dashes in between your numbers, we can set a regular expression for that as well. So if I take that same number from up above and try to put it down into this field, it's gonna say, sorry, your number doesn't look correct. I have to add in, in this case, the dashes in between those, and then it's able to be submitted. We can do regular expressions for all kinds of things, zip codes, state abbreviations, ID numbers, literally anything. Now, I'm not skilled in writing my own regular expressions, so I take advantage of a really helpful website 
called regxlib.com. This is the regular expression library. And this is a place where thousands of people have submitted their regular expression rules for common scenarios. Phone numbers being one of the most common. Just head over to this website, search for phone number, and there are 328 regular expression rules related to phone numbers. Uh, you simply need to look at the description. So we're checking out the matches. So this one uh, requires dashes in between. Um, this is the same. This one will accept parentheses. Um, some of them include country codes, area codes, extensions. There's something there for, uh, for everything. Once you kind of play around with this, you'll start to get a better handle for what a regular expression looks like and potentially can uh, create your own if you have unique numbers um, that you can't find anything for in the regular expression library. Now, how does this work? Uh, pretty straightforward. We're going to take the regular expression that we are interested in. So we're going to copy that funky code that you see right there. I'm just going to copy control C, head over to my Google form, go to my question. So here's my phone number, turn on response validation, and then I'm going to select the regular expression from the drop down list. And then I'm going to say the regular expression is going to match. And then you're going to type or uh, paste that regular expression code into the box provided. Now this is very uh, specific, so you might want to make sure that your error message uh, details out exactly how you want your text or your submission formatted so that this question can be submitted. Nothing more frustrating to a user than not knowing what to do to satisfy the requirements for that particular question. I have two additional resources that you might find helpful. First, I mentioned that the password trick uh, we talked about a little bit ago works really well with branched Google Forms. Check out this video up here if you're interested in learning more about creating those branches. And if you're a big Google Forms user, you can access my entire library of Google Form videos by clicking on this playlist down below.